In today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the basics of plyometrics for tennis. So a super busy day for me today. I've come into Cheshire Barbell nice and early just to get the rig set up that you can just make out over my shoulder so that later on this afternoon I can sit down with you guys and talk about today's topic. Neil Skupski is playing in the quarterfinals with Jamie today, so I'm going to be making sure I watch that and keep an eye on the results. After that, I've got a session with Ant at the track, which today's theme is plyometrics, which is why I thought today would be a really good topic to do the video for you guys. Following that, I'm coming back to Cheshire Barbell, session with one of my weightlifters, a session with Ant once he's finished tennis, doing some squats, and then I've got another session with some weightlifters and triathletes back here at Cheshire Barbell before I'll then get a chance to sit down with you guys and talk about today's topic. So let's head over to the track, I'll grab some footage and I'll see you guys in a moment. I just wanted to start by answering a question, or in fact, a number of questions that I've received from a couple of subscribers here on YouTube and also followers on Instagram. I work remotely with a relatively small number of people. I try and keep standards incredibly high by only having a very small capacity or number of people that I can work with at any one time. However, I do work with people not only local to the gym here at Cheshire Barbell, but also remotely online via the Tennis Strong website. So I've placed the link to the website below just so that you guys can have a little look at that and find out more information. Anyway, plyometrics. What are plyometrics? Why do I think you should do them? And how do you do them? 
First of all, plyometrics are a variation of strength training, which helps develop the elasticity and explosiveness of the tendons and muscles. They're incredibly important for tennis because as I've suggested in previous videos before, tennis is a very dynamic, explosive sport in multiple directions over a very long period of time. The more plyometric or explosive and dynamic you are, the quicker you can change direction, the quicker you can get to shots, the quicker you can recover back into position to prepare yourself for the next shot. Plyometrics are incredibly important. They're actually really helpful for preventing injury as well. Plyometrics, by definition, are a variation of exercise which develop a certain phase of muscle contraction. So to explain this basically, there are two primary phases of muscle contraction. One is concentric, as I've discussed in a previous video, concentric muscle contractions are where the muscle is producing force but shortening in length. So if I use the bicep curl as an example, now I am lifting a weight, the muscle is shortening whilst producing force. That's the concentric action. There is then an eccentric action, which is where the muscle is still producing force, but it's actually lengthening. So that would be the lowering phase of a bicep curl, the lowering phase of a squat, for example. In sport, particularly during explosive actions, change of direction, etc., for example, there is another phase known as the amortization phase. The amortization phase is a very, 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 very fast, or at least it should be, contraction or change in contraction type, whereby the eccentric very quickly changes to concentric. So an example of this, if we focus on the ankle specifically, if you were to step off of a box, land on the floor and instantly react and jump off the ground, that change in eccentric or absorption into concentric explosion is the amortization phase. And it's the amortization phase that we are trying to develop specifically with plyometrics. So by default, plyometrics have to be very quick. Specifically, the contraction phase, the amortization phase, should be in around 0.2 seconds. Now, that's incredibly fast. I can't, and I don't know anybody that can, look at an exercise and measure the contraction rate, speed in which that, uh, speed in which that contraction phase takes place. However, there are certain type of exercises. There's a certain method in which you can follow to ensure that the exercise that you're using is going to develop plyometric ability. So at the start of the track session that you watched earlier, you'll have recognized a number of exercises that were quite dynamic and quite explosive, such as the fast skips or the squat jumps, for example, which whilst they are exercises that will help develop power, they're not by definition plyometric because they don't have that really short, sharp amortization phase. So we still use those. We use those as part of the warm up. We use those to prepare the body for the session that was about to begin. However, the plyometrics specifically, and I'll place them on the screen now, are exercises such as the toe bouncers or the, the pogos that you may see. You'll see on the screen now that the moment, or at least the aim is, the moment the foot contacts the ground, you're trying to rebound quickly, almost as though you're, you're landing on hot coals or pins. You're trying to react as quickly as you can and spend as little time on the ground. So the, the purpose of that drill is to try and develop elasticity and plyometric ability in the Achilles tendon at the ankle. There are other exercises which I'll place on the screen now, such as the drop jump. The drop jump is where Ant is stepping off of an elevated platform, in this case, one of the seats within the stand at the running track. And the moment he hits the floor, similar to the toe bouncers and pogos, you're trying to react and spend as little time on the floor as possible. Again, very good for developing plyometric ability at the ankle. Similarly, there is then a depth jump. And the depth jump looks very similar. However, in this instance, I'm not as concerned necessarily about the contact time, although it's nice to have a small contact time. But actually in this instance, we're trying to focus on the plyometric ability, more of the knees and the hips. So I do want a bit of knee and hip flexion or bend upon landing, but the intention in this instance is to try and jump as high as physically possible. So therefore there tends to be a little bit less of an amortization phase at the ankle, more of an explosive, powerful drive out of the hips and knees during the extension phase. But if you look at the hips and knees, there is still a very short amortization phase or descent into an ascent, okay, or, or, or an absorption into an explosion. 
So you get the common theme here. The purpose of a plyometric is to develop that amortization phase, which has got to be incredibly fast. You can do these using change of direction drills. In my opinion, a lot of change of direction drills that we try to do on, on court or, or here at the running track are a little bit too complex. Again, similar theme to what I suggested in last week's video, the simpler the exercise, the bigger the output. So it's very, very useful to make sure that the exercise that you're using yourself or if you're a coach giving to your athletes are as simple as physically possible so the athlete can make the maximum output possible. The key here is to react. The key is to make sure that the contact time is as little as possible or instead the actual contraction time at the hip or the knee is as fast as physically possible. Plyometrics, it's important to understand this, plyometrics are incredibly intense. So interestingly, Ant in today's session was explaining to me that he didn't feel very fatigued at the end of the session, which is of no surprise. By nature, there's lots of rest in between the exercises. We're looking for quality, not quantity. Quality is effectively following the method in which I've just explained. Quantity needs to be low because surprisingly, these are incredibly fatiguing exercises. You may not feel fatigue on the day, but you will feel fatigue if you've done it correctly within the following 24, 48, or even 72 hours after the session. Now, you might not necessarily experience muscle soreness or DOMS. You will likely feel quite lethargic, heavy, and, and generally quite fatigued because these exercises are designed to stimulate growth and, and change of the nervous system. It's quite common as a result for people to do far too many or in fact not get enough rest in between sets or repetitions, which reduces repetition quality dramatically. Keep repetitions really low, maybe in and around four, five or six reps per set and just choose a handful of exercises that you feel is appropriate for what it is that you're trying to develop. In today's session, we probably spent around about 30 to 45 minutes doing a little bit of mobility work, some activation drills, and, and generally just warming up. The plyometric side of today's session only lasted approximately 20 minutes, and of that 20 minutes, a lot of it was spent standing around, and, and actually an instant today was, was just playing around with the drone, which, which to my better judgment, I took up today, despite the, the strong winds in between what are the two storms, storm Kira and, and Storm Dennis, I think, which is going to hit us this weekend here in the UK. So there was lots of standing around, lots of resting, lots of allowing the nervous system just to recover and then go again to keep repetition quality high. Another point I'll make is that a lot of people avoid plyometrics because they've been told that you have to be able to squat maybe two or two and a half times body weight in order to get the most out of it. That is correct. You want a well-developed nervous system in order to maximize the benefits from plyometrics. So yes, in an ideal world, you would want somebody to have that capacity of strength or at least strong foundations to maximize the benefits from plyometrics. However, that doesn't necessarily mean you don't do them. I would maybe err on the side of caution whereby you don't do a lot until that person or, or you yourself has the capacity to have that strength and that overall training age, you've maybe been training four or five years consistently throughout that time period. However, that, like I said, that doesn't mean you don't do them. That just means maybe that you keep volume incredibly low. Maybe just choose two or three exercises and, and develop them anyway. By nature of the sport, you're doing plyometrics on court. Maybe not to maximum output, as I suggested earlier, but you are carrying out various movements which involve that amortization phase, change of direction, moguls out wide, getting to the net as quick as you can, split steps, etc. So do develop them, keep volume low, and practice them with high quality. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it explained what is effectively quite a complex topic, but one that we can keep simple. Please do subscribe by hitting the button below. Hit the bell icon next to that button in order to get notified of our next release. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on Tuesday.